topic is rare diseases, and our focus topic is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, also known as EDS. There are five key takeaways we want you to have after watching this mini-lecture. One, EDS is a complicated genetic disease with a wide variety of symptoms that make it difficult to diagnose. Two, genetic markers of the majority of the subtypes of EDS are well characterized. Three, future work needs to fully characterize the disease molecularly. Four, there is limited treatment, education, and resources for those who have EDS. And five, new and upcoming research is promising with the Norris Lab and Hedge study. Here are some key terms that you need to know before watching this lecture. Connective tissues are a complex mixture of proteins and other substances that provide strength and elasticity to the underlying structures in the body. POTS is postural tachycardia syndrome, which is when the heart rate increases very quickly after getting up from sitting or lying down. Joint hypermobility is when a person's joints have a greater range of motion than is expected or usual. Skin hyperextensibility is when the skin can be stretched beyond the normal range. Tissue fragility means that the body's organs and other structures are more vulnerable to damage. Pneumothorax is a collection of air outside the lungs which could cause the lungs to collapse. Locus or loci are a physical site or location within a genome. MCAS is mast cell activation syndrome, a common comorbidity of EDS that causes sudden anaphylaxis without an allergy or allergic reaction present. Here's a timeline of this presentation. We're going we're gonna to describe what is EDS, what are the common subtypes, and how is it inherited. Then we're going to contextualize through a research summary, the key findings and highlights, scientific players of EDS. Finally, we're going to connect to real-world implications of EDS, a scientist feature and research highlight, and additional resources. Introduction. What is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? An estimated 200,000 people in the U.S. have EDS, which makes it a rare disease. But what is EDS? EDS is a group of inherited disorders that affect your connective tissues in the joints, blood vessels, and skin. The most common symptoms include joint hypermobility, skin hyperextensibility, and tissue fragility. EDS is caused by a variety of genetic mutations, and there is no cure. However, there are a variety of treatment options, including drugs, physical therapy, surgery, and orthopedic intervention. And this graphic shows that Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome can affect any connective tissue in your body, including your cartilage, bones, blood, and fat. And depending on where EDS affects your connective tissue, you might experience symptoms in your skin, joints, muscles, and blood vessels. This image is courtesy of Cleveland Clinic. Here are some phenotypes and symptoms of EDS. There is a chiari malformation, tendon or ligament tears, easy bruising, hernias, MCAS, pelvic prolapse, delayed wound healing, abnormal scarring, gastroparesis, joint dislocations, hypermobility, POTS, mitral valve prolapse, and cervical instability. And this image was provided by the Ehlers-Danlos Society. EDS does not affect a specific demographic group, gender, or race. Hypermobile EDS, the most common type, affects around 1 in 5,000 people. However, since it's difficult to diagnose, this number may be an underestimate. Classical EDS affects between 1 in 20,000 to 1 in 40,000 people, and vascular EDS affects between 1 in 100,000 to 1 in 200,000 people. Other types of EDS are much less common. These statistics are based on a variety of studies. The three main types of EDS are classical EDS, which is characterized by skin fragility with extensive atrophic scarring and very stretchy skin with velvety or doughy texture, vascular EDS, which is characterized by arterial fragility with aneurysm dissection or ruptures, organ fragility and rupture, extensive bruising, pneumothorax, thin translucent skin with visible veins and club foot, and hypermobile EDS, which can be characterized by generalized joint hypermobility, joint instability, and chronic pain. Here are some other types of EDS. 
EDS can be inherited through autosomal dominant inheritance or autosomal recessive inheritance. However, you could develop the condition through a missense point mutation. A person with EDS can only pass on the same type of EDS to their children. Severity can also vary between family and family member. This is an autosomal dominant pattern. An affected parent has a 50% chance of passing EDS down to their child. And this image is courtesy of Ehlers Donler Society. If it's inherited through an autosomal recessive pattern, there are multiple different ways that it can be passed down. Both the parents can be unaffected carriers, which would result in a child having a 25% chance of being a affected person or a 50% chance of being an unaffected carrier and 25% chance of being unaffected. If one parent is an unaffected carrier, they have a 50% chance of the child being also an unaffected character. And if one parent is affected and the other parent is an unaffected carrier, there's a 50% chance a child is an unaffected carrier and a 50% ch chance that the child has the disorder. Again, this image is courtesy of Ehlers Danlow Society. So this is a sheet on our detection and interpretation of shared genetic influences on 42 human traits. And we will go in more depth in the next few slides. So RGWAS utilized genetic scans to detect genetic variants associated with 42 multiple phenotypes. It identified 341 loci associated with these phenotypes, looked at their influence on human traits including hypermobility, and included anthropometric traits, neurological disease, and susceptibility to infection. The GWAS learn, aimed to le learn more about ca causal relationships and the framework between differing traits, and learning about the molecular function of a gene. The GWAS sy systemically performed a genome-wide search for genetic variants that influence pairs of traits and interpreted these associations in causal and non-causal models. Over 64,000 European ancestry individuals were genetically scanned for analysis. Some scans were performed by the 23andMe company. Imputation at the level of summary statistics with ImpGV 1.0 and estimated the approximate number of independent associated variants with a false discovery rate of 10% using FGWAS v0.3.6. They ranged from about 5 age at voice drop in men to over 500 height. A statistical model using log functions and p-values estimated relationships between phenotypes. They tested the probability that a genomic region contains a genetic variant that influences the first trait, the probability that a genetic variant influences the second trait, and the probability that a genetic variant influences both. Both traits and the probability that both traits contain both a genetic variant that influenced any traits. Models were used to summarize the expected correlation. Some phenotypes are in association clusters in the figures, including age at menarche, coronary artery disease, immune-related, and infectious diseases. These were the results. A new method for identifying trait pairs showed evidence of a causal relationship between gene and phenotype. Several hundred loci were identified that affect multiple traits. The strongest associations were mostly between metabolic and immune-related traits. BMI was found to be correlated with triglyceride levels. High LDL levels increased the risk for coronary artery disease. These traits were also linked to genetic variants. Here are some limitations and remaining questions from the study. The GWAS used in the study was based on genotyping arrays and imputation. Loci identified are more common, and rarer loci may not have been detected. The main limiting factor to scaling this approach in a clinical or further research setting will be phenotyping rather than genotyping, because many of these traits have high variability within them and go detected unless picked up by a genetic test. Data was also all from Europeans. There will be limitations to applying data to other population groups. So what are the conclusions? Genetic variation can often affect multiple traits. Relevant to our research was the findings on hypermobility. 
Phenotypic variations in hypermobility were moderately associated with variations in other anthropometric traits. The researchers hope findings can be used to improve our understanding of individual variations and how their effects manifest and are inherited. Here are some traits that are associated with joint hypermobility. The data for this chart was pulled from the GWAS that we looked at. It shows traits that appear to be under the same genetic influence as joint hypermobility, which is one of the most common symptoms of EDS. Traits like asthma align with the pneumothorax symptoms of vascular EDS, triglyceride production, which is responsible for major energy sources in the body, and hypothyroidism often cause fatigue, something which is common among all types of EDS. Genes causing nearsightedness may also be associated with brittle cornea syndrome. Other traits like baldness, nose size, height, and waist-hip ratio all stem from the body's production of collagen for connective tissue, and the mutations of the body's collagen proteins are the known major cause of EDS. Overall, the data demonstrates the correlation between hypermobility, which is the defining characteristic of EDS, and other traits that can be found in the various subtypes of EDS. This chart outlines some of the different subtypes of EDS, with the most common being listed at the top. It's interesting to note that hypermobile EDS has a very complex genetic mechanism that has not fully been characterized yet. We will dive further into this when we discuss our interview with a scientist. The COL gene family encodes different collagen proteins, and mutations in this family are extremely common among EDS patients. Other genes, like the PLOD1 gene, also aid in the production of collagen. The Mayo Clinic is currently conducting two different clinical studies related to EDS. The first one is more specific and deals with EDS patients who have had unsuccessful shoulder surgery, whereas the second one, which is taking place at UF Health Jacksonville, aims to find blood and serum biomarker differences between EDS patients. A common issue with EDS is misdiagnosis. Patients with EDS, especially those with EDS are often misdiagnosed for other conditions due to the various symptoms that may be presented. With 13 subtypes total, each with different minor and major diagnostic criteria, genetic testing process, and genetic variants and symptoms, these symptoms also vary case by case and appear all over the body, making it difficult for medical doctors to pinpoint. Hypermobility can also get dismissed as someone being more flexible. 77% of those now diagnosed with EDS had been misdiagnosed at least once. Some keys to advancement. The key to improving diagnosis rates is more education, more information and research on the causes leading to a more genetically accurate diagnosis. Advancements in genetic analysis, genetic counseling, and genetic testing are essential for progress and improved understanding in the field. RGWAS and the Norris Lab aim to identify and look into specific genes that affect hypermobility and EDS. A faster and more accurate genetic diagnosis for a range of rare diseases and genetic syndromes, not just EDS. The future of EDS. Research into potential treatment options beyond supportive therapies, enzyme replacement therapies, and viral vector gene therapies, finding a genetic cause of HEDS and further classifying subtypes of HEDS if needed, orthopedic intervention if solutions are not met into treatment, Advancements in orthopedic practices can help better manage the pain, and to train and educate physicians and other medical professionals on how to treat EDS. Here is a lab that is doing current research into EDS. The main goal of this lab is to continue deciphering the genetic and molecular foundations of EDS. Despite its prevalence, it has remained a neglected condition in the medical and scientific field. To date, there are no treatments or cures besides symptom management. The Norris Lab works to combat this with their EDS-HSD survey, HEDS genetic registry, EDS mouse models, and the Patient Scientist Initiative. Recently, they were able to identify a very strong candidate gene for HEDS. Courtney Gensemer, who was our interviewee, was diagnosed with EDS at age 19. She has a BS in pharmaceutical product development from Westchester University and a PhD in biomedical science from the Medical University of South Carolina. Her research focuses on genetics of rare and not so rare connective tissue disorders. She has over 15,000 followers on Instagram, where she shares science communication and has an EDS awareness account. 
She has trained over 21 EDS patient scientists who are paving the future of the rare disease research. If you want to learn more, you can visit these links.